our most esteemed commissioners, Commissioner Socorro Inding, Commissioner Marlon Casquillo, Commissioner Aimi Ferolino, Commissioner Ri Bolao, Bulay, Commissioner Aimi Neri, Commissioner George Erwin Garcia, our Executive Director, and other officials and employees of this commission, friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, meaning peace be upon everyone. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to President Rodrigo Duterte for the trust he has bestowed upon this humble public servant to lead one of the most instrumental institutions of democracy. I come here with the mission of further strengthening this commission. Let me chart this commission's course as we take this journey together. The COMELEC as a democratic institution is only as strong as the people who compose it. To strengthen the COMELEC, we need to take good care of all our employees, as our workforce is our biggest asset. It is therefore very important and I will make it a priority that all employees be given every opportunity for growth. We will maximize all the benefits that come with working for the COMELEC. Every official and employee should be given what they are due so that in return, I could demand their best and top-notch service for this commission and to our people. To strengthen the COMELEC, we will also look for every aspect of this commission where we could level up. You have to indulge me. This is my trademark as a public servant. In all my past undertakings, I always bring the organization to the next level. I always aim to improve, reform, and elevate the level of service. When I worked as undersecretary in the Department of Interior and Local Government, I worked for the abolition of not hundreds, but 2,000 ghost barangays in my province of Lanao del Sur. The President, Cory Aquino, complained that after the snap presidential election, she observed that thousands of barangays in the Lanao provinces were voting uniformly all at 100% in favor of her opponent. And so the president created the interagency task force to investigate these ghost barangays. And I was tasked to head this interagency committee. We proceeded with our ocular investigations in all these barangays. And I started when the proclamation of martial law was declared in 1971 to check on all the barangays that were created. And believe me, I discovered that thousands of barangays have no houses, no residence, or people 
in these areas. And so I went home and I talked to my wife. I told her what I discovered about the existence of some 2,000 barangays in the Lano provinces. You know, the Lano provinces is famous for the birds, the bees, and the dead who vote during election. So I told my wife what I discovered, and I told her that it was my intention to abolish these barangays. My wife cried, and she told me, how can you do that? Candidates for barangay would kill each other in our province. You want to abolish 2,000 ghost barangays? That means 2,000 barangay officials will be planning to kill you or what? But I told my wife, these ghost barangays suck the vitality of our country. These ghost barangays constitute the biggest electoral fraud in our history. Remember, I told my wife, when I took my oath, I declared that I shall discharge to the best of my ability the duties of my present position. And so I proceeded to prepare my report and attach the proposed executive order to be signed by the president. And together with my secretary, the late Jaime Ferrer, we went to see the president, Cory Aquino, and submitted my report and my recommendation. After reading it, immediately he signed the executive order abolishing 2,000 ghost barangays in Lanao del Sur. This abolition saved billions of pesos in regular allotments to these uninhabited barangays or villages. When I was elected governor of Lanao del Sur, I discovered that more than half of the employees were not receiving in full their salaries and emoluments under the salary standardization law, Kinakal task. And our provincial capital was housed in a decrepit pre-pub Marcos school building with rusty roofings that leaked rainwater straight to my office table. I corrected all this, and with the help of God, I succeeded in building all the needed infrastructures and revenues for my province, like the four hectare provincial capital complex overlooking the scenic Lake Lanao, the concreting of major road networks. This elevated Lanao del Sur from a sixth class to a fourth class province. As secretary in the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, we have activated all its 28 mandates under its Charter Republic Act 9997. Under my watch, the NCMF attained the seal of excellence in government service which is the ISO 9001-2015 in not one, but in all of its processes. With the help of all the officials and the rank and file employees of the Commission on Election, we shall achieve the same and reach an even higher level. Finally, we aim to strengthen this Commission so that we can perform our most important mandate, and that is to preserve the sanctity of the vote and the independence of this commission. I stand before you today as a defender of democracy, who will be independent and conscientious in giving life 
to the fundamental freedom of suffrage. To accentuate my stance for impartiality or independence, I solemnly talk my autobobies before the highest magistrate of the land, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. We will honor and protect the Constitution in every decision we pen, in every program and project we undertake, and even in every single vote we count. The sanctity of the vote shall be our guiding principle. As a collegial body, I know my fellow commissioners will work with me in elevating the level of integrity of this commission. This is imperative as the COMELEC embodies the very essence of democracy. There is equality in casting the vote. The beauty of design of democracy is what we preserve and promote. In our hands rests the fundamental equality of each person and the promise that they can determine their destiny through their sacred vote. As we work, let us remember that we owe this service to the Filipino people. We will not let the Filipino people down. Wasalam and Sukran, maraming salamat po.